Hello and welcome to today's Unitist talk. My name is Gudrun. And my name is Christoph. Today we are going to talk about spatial reference systems and projections, but let's jump right into the map. So, um, probably this is familiar to you. You open a new map, zoom to the area of interest, for example here we are in the city of Salzburg, then you add some data, some local data street network to your map and oops you see there is a problem with the alignment you see the river here in the base map the Salzach River and this is the Salzach River in the street um, network and there is obviously a problem Many people would say that's a projection problem. Yeah, you're right. Many people would say, oh, the projection doesn't fit. Um, but in reality, it's not a projection problem. But this is a problem of different so-called geodetic datums. Um, yeah. It's but about what, the shape of the here? Earth. Oh. Uh, that's a mellow. Yeah. But you can picture it as the shape of the Earth. Yeah, I like those melons because they bring their meridians with them. So let's have a closer look on that. So, here we have our prime meridian, this is the North Pole, as you can see, um, and uh, this is commonly referred to the Greenwich, to Greenwich, meridian through Greenwich, and we go one, uh, 360 degrees around the pole, we can measure these angles around 360 degrees, and um, we can measure from the equator you see here, we can measure up 90 degrees north or 90 degrees down to 90 degrees south. So each point on the surface has a so-called longitude, that's the angle um, around the pole. So this is, for example, the city of Salzburg that has a longitude of 13 degrees east of Greenwich and a latitude that's the angle up from the equator, and in the case of Salzburg, it's, I think, 40, 47 degrees um, up to the north. So, it's a cool way because we can unambiguously um, measure the coordinate of every point on the Earth. Well, the problem is, it's not unambiguous. <laughs> oh. Because there is a different models of the Earth, different conceptual models of the Earth that we map our coordinates to. And yeah. if you can hold the lemon, <laughs> lemon the melon, please. Uh, in the 1800s, in the 19th century, there were geodesists who measured the, the shape of the Earth, the, the, the curvature of the Earth, and came up with uh, rotational ellipsoid models of the Earth. So um, in this mathematical model, the Earth looks like this, whereas actually uh, the true shape of the Earth is, is more like, like a potato. Uh, it's called the geoid. But this one, uh, the mathematical model was uh, suggested, at least for, um, for the case of Austria, by a person called Mr. Bessel. And he suggested that in... Um, 1841. Okay, and it was a pretty good guess, I think, of the real um, ellipsoid or of the, the real uh, Earth surface model, more or less. Given that this was in the 1900s, yeah, it was sure. a phenomenal approximation of the shape of the Earth. Yeah. And what they did is they tied it to a um, specific place, so they wanted to, to fit that uh, ellipsoid to fit with the um, Earth's surface. At the local area where they needed it. And right. that was for, in... for uh, Austria, that was, for example, Vienna. Yeah. And they used actually the same mathematical model, the same ellipsoid, but in a little bit different rotation. 
uh, and tied it to a place uh, close to uh, Berlin. Berlin, Potsdam. That's called Potsdam. For uh, Germany. For Germany. Yeah, so we have the same, the Austrians and the Germans had the same ellipsoid with the same um, uh, axis. The, there's an axis towards the north that's not that long um, than the axis to the equator. Um, but they are tied at different positions to the Earth. And so um, it's different geodetic datums. So a datum consists of this definition of the sphere read, in this case Bessel, and um, the place where it was tied to the actual Earth surface. How do we do it today? Today we have a lot of fancy satellites flying around. Um, they measure the Earth very exactly. And so um, they came up uh, with an ellipsoid, the GRS-80 ellipsoid, and they used it in a datum called WGS for World Geodetic System from 1985. Uh, 1984, sorry. And, and the trick was not to tie it to any true location on the on the surface of the Earth, but to the center, to the mass center of the Earth. Yeah. So it approximates the Earth overall best, you could say, but locally it's not that well aligned to the Earth's surface than those local ellipsoids are. And our problem we had with our data in the map was that the base map data was based on this um, WGS84 spheroid and the data with the street network was based on this um, geodetic datum that's located in Vienna called Militärgeographische Institut. Right. That's the name of the datum. The, thing that, we, the thing that we need to do now is we have to uh, go from one um, ellipsoid to the other one uh, in, in order to make our coordinates uh, match. And the way how we do it is we rotate that a little bit, we shift it a little bit, uh, we turn it a little bit. Uh, we can also resize it a little bit. But you can think of that if you have two surfaces that are somehow um, spherical or you can't really bring them together by this way. So you can bring them exactly together at one point, but if you have a larger area, um, then it's not possible so easily to, to fit them together with this rotation and so on. So if you go from one to the other, uh, that is an approximation. Yeah. You, you never are 100% um, correct. correct. And um, going from here to here, that is what we call a transformation. Yes, and I would say, let's have a look in the map how this works in GIS. Okay, uh, let's check first the coordinate system of our street network. Here on the properties, I go to source, and then we have this spatial reference in there. And uh, you can see we have a projection involved here. I, we will go to that later. So the projection is based on a so-called geographic coordinate system in this ArcGIS terminology or we can also even say it's a geodetic datum and this geodetic datum is named Militärgeographische Institut um, or DMGI and is based on this Bessel spheroid uh, or ellipsoid um, with two axes and the semi major axis, that is the um, distance from the Earth center towards the equator, is 6377 kilometers, and the uh, semi minor axis from the Earth center or the ellipsoid center towards the pole is 6356 kilometers. Okay, um, we already said that the backdrop, the base map, is in a different coordinate system and this coordinate system of the base map is WGS84. So I go now into the map properties and here under transformation you see that the system 
uh, ArcGIS already um, detected that there are two different geodetic datums involved, so it's uh, WGS 1984 and Geographische Institut, and there is um, a list of possible transformations uh, between those two um, geodetic datums, and the system just chose one of them, and uh, it is probably not the best one, because you see it doesn't fit. So I can have a look at the details here. Um, the area of use is here Europe and former Yugoslavia on shore and the accuracy is very bad of one kilometer. Um, so let's check what happens if we do not use any transformation. If we um, do as if the data was based on the same geodetic datum. If we pretend this and uh, when I measure here for example the distance between the fountain in Mirabel Gardens and the respective location in the street network you see it's around uh, it's around 80 meters. Okay that's the offset when using no transformation and that's definitely too much. So um, we will choose another transformation that fits our need better. Let's check the next one in the list here. And this you see it's for Croatia and although the accuracy is very good, the accuracy is only good for the area of use and we are not in Croatia. So let's try this one. Um, here we have the area of use Austria, that's fine, and the accuracy is 1.5 meters, that's fine too, because we only need it as a background information for our data, and I apply it, and you see, it fits quite well. Okay, Christoph, now we talked about um, spatial reference systems. We yeah. talked about the reference ellipsoids, the datums, and the transformation, how to get from one datum to another one. But what about projections? Yeah, most people, they talk always about projections. And it's important to talk about projections because um, with a projection, we can go from this curved surface of the Earth to a flat surface like we have here, this sheet of paper, where we have, when we have a paper map, or even a screen, also a screen on your smartphone. And the word projection uh, actually comes from the idea that you project with a uh, light source this um, globe to a paper map. So the light beams would be projected from uh, inside the globe to the 2D map. Sure, and you see everything you have here on the Earth's surface, you see then on this map. And you can think, and that's very easy to, to think of, that um, something that's here on the Earth's surface um, is pretty correct on the, on the paper map because it's very similar, it touches here the Earth's surface. However, if we have something that is somewhere down there to the south in this case, or up there to the north. Um, in this uh, way, for example, the scale is much more exaggerated here, so um, it's not preserving the sizes anymore. So the size uh, in this case, in this um, projection model, in this equation model, uh, the size is distorted. Yeah. What if we would like to preserve size? Yeah, we could preserve size, but you can imagine um, if we transform this spherical surface to a flat one, then we have to distort another property, another math mathematical property, like shape, for example. So we could preserve size, but then we, will, um, we, have, we would have shape deformations. Um, there are other properties like the direction to a specific point, for example, or the um, 
the distances. The distances between a point and some other points or so that can be preserved, but there is no projection that can preserve everything. So you have to make a choice for a projection of your needs. Right. And there is compromise projections that preserves everything a little bit, but distorts everything a yeah. little bit. And it looks nice, but it's not correct. <laughs> <laughs> That's very often used for uh, projections uh, of the entire Earth. Yeah. So a projection is always a kind of mathematical model that transforms our latitude and longitude angular coordinates to um, x and y coordinates on a flat surface, those Cartesian coordinates we know from school. So we always get from our latitude longitude angles we discussed already to our x and y coordinates on a sheet of paper or on the screen. And that's called a Cartesian coordinate system because uh, it was suggested by a mathematician called René Descartes. Descartes yes. Um, and we can also show that there are, there are several um, different types of... Uh, I help you there. Yeah, thank you. Um, different mathematical um, models. models or, or shapes uh, where you can project to. For example, um, what you draw on here could be uh, such a cylinder that's wrapped around the Earth and then we open it up and then we have here our um, map uh, in yeah, a Cartesian, Cartesian system. Or we can also put it differently on the over the earth. That's a transversal cylinder now. And you can imagine along a meridian, the quality is very good, but as you go farther away from the meridian, the quality will be worse. That would be, for example, UTM. UTM, yeah. It, UTM is a system where you have those zones along those meridians and then you um, you rotate the earth a bit or you rotate the cylinder <laughs> as you think, and then you make the next strip with the next strip and so on. Okay? Okay. There's even models where you put, very fancy, you put a cone yeah. and then unwrap it and have a coordinate system. Sure. And there is models that are too complicated to show uh, where this um, translation from theoretical to um, uh, map coordinates is uh, a purely mathematical yeah, one. Yeah, it's just a mathematic translation, but it's uh, a translation that can be reversed. So it's, it's exact to get to the map and back to the sphere or vice versa. What do you think? Can you show that on the GIS? Yeah, let's have a look in the GIS. So let's check the projection here. By default, ArcGIS Pro takes the coordinate system of the first data source that was added to the map. In this case, it was our street data. So it uses the geodetic datum information, what we already discussed, and the projection information that's based on this geodetic datum from the street network in our case. And you see it's a transverse Mercator projection, that means it's a cylinder projection, but not a cylinder that is parallel to the Earth's axis, but one that is rotated and touches the surface, in this case, at a meridian or a geographic longitude of 13.3 degrees periodic. And this is just uh, a meridian um, running through Salzburg, so it's quite optimal for Salzburg areas um, and it's a stripe, so to say, like UTM and you can see this when you zoom out and you see that only a portion of the Earth is portrait in this projection. Let's try a different projection. Um, so we can choose between a whole bunch of projections here. Let's choose one related to the whole world and I will use the equal earth projection. That's a relatively new one. Why is it called equal earth? Because it's treating the sizes of the countries on the earth 
equally. So it's a size preserving projection. And it's nice to visualize projection properties by using a so-called Tissot Indicatrix. Um, I looked this up at ArcGIS Online and you see that's um, a set of circles that are positioned all over the Earth and um, in reality it's circles of the, of the same size and you see how a projection, what a projection makes out of that. Um, in this case you can see in this equal, equal Earth projection that the area of the circles stays the same but the shape of the circles is deformed. And we can check another projection that is very popular, um, that is the wet map Mercator projection. Now we have again a Mercator projection but with a um, cylinder that is um, parallel, the cylinder axis parallel to the earth axis and it touches the earth at the equator. And what it does is it preserves the shapes, so the circles um, stay circles, um, at least local shapes, uh, but it greatly um, enlarges the size um, towards the poles. So the size here at the equator is true um, in respect uh, to, the, uh, to the scale, but the farther you go up north and south, the greater the problems in this um, respect are. So uh, I also can add some geographic grid and you see here is the origin of this projection. So, and this is the intersection of the zero meridian in Greenwich and the equator. And here is, when you look down there, um, where the uh, projection starts, or where the counting starts, and you can you have meters here um, in x coordinates and meters up in y coordinates from this origin. So each point in this projection has is x y coordinates in meters. However, let's have a look what happens if we just use these coordinates for calculating something. And I will go in here on my street network, select one street segment, and now I will do a little calculation. For example, I will do a buffering. And I will choose a buffer of 10 meters around this segment. Let's calculate that. Okay, and this buffer was calculated in this xy coordinates and now I check it and here I have my measuring device and you see I can choose to measure planar that means within my map coordinate system and within my map coordinate system, yeah, it shows me it's 10 meters. However, my map coordinate system is highly distorted um, in respect uh, to the uh, real world. And I can also measure geodesic, that means I can measure on the surf surface of the ellipsoid. And when I measure here, you see, in reality, the buffer was not a 10 meter buffer, but only a 6.74 meter buffer. So we have a little problem when we calculate within a coordinate system that's not suitable for our needs. Thank you for watching our UNIGS talk. We hope that you benefited from it and now have a better conception in working with projections and uh, spatial reference systems. So, but now let's have some melon. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> okay.